so we learned today that diversity and inclusion are really important topics. Uh, we learned that state policies and practices should be in place. They can at least help uh, if they are implemented in a meaningful way. And that labor shortage in Estonia is very relevant and we are in trouble. Let's, let's put it bluntly. We need a qualified immigration by definition. So whatever we think about this issue, we need it because of rational reasons. Mm -hmm. I was just running through, it's more complicated anyway. So I guess we need a separate conference on that, but I can see that we have one question here. Can we get a microphone over here, please? Uh, thank you. Um, it was a very interesting presentation, and we talked yesterday around the dinner as well about the inclusion and leadership for the inclusion. So my question to the, all the panelists, it's very clear in Europe uh, not only in Estonia, but the whole Europe, that we have a structural problems with the labor market and the workforce. Every country is facing basically the same statistics that Raivo presented about Estonia. It's, none of the other countries is different. Only Finland has 50,000 of our people that we want to come back, but get back. But there are other 50,000 Finns in Sweden that the Finland wants to get back. And, and basically, it's the, it's the similar structural problems. What, this is easy to deal with in the way that we say that we need uh, qualified immigration and now we 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 come to the problem of um, mindset because uh, the problem we have in Estonia at least what integration monitoring studies show that there is a very clear glass ceiling mm -hmm. for uh, women and for uh, minorities yeah. uh, all the other structural indicators are the same but they are still not reaching the the management jobs or the um, salary levels and this is clearly, we don't know, the, I don't have the explanatory uh, factors what create glass ceiling, but there cl clearly could be some kind of a lack of inclusive leadership, um, uh, discrimination, maybe not direct, but at least um, uh, indirect, uh, and other things. So these are the probably things we need to deal first before we start dealing with immigration. Otherwise, the immigration will hit the same glass ceiling that the local minorities or women are are hitting right now? That's my question. So do we have one minute comments? Yeah, I, I agree entirely with you, Christina. I think if we rush into bringing more people in when we haven't tidied up our cultures, then we are going to create um, these, um, I think for self-fulfilling prophecy, where we begin to see p people's uh, skills from particular areas not flourishing as it should. So I think it is urgent that uh, in our organizations, we need to put the right systems in place so that we can receive the immigrants and give them their due. I agree entirely with you. I think the ceiling is even becoming concrete because I think with glass, at least you can see people walking there. But it's so solid in some places where being a woman, you cannot attain a particular role in, in an organization. And the real challenge for us is to look at pay gap. And the issues of pay gap is not just one country, and I think it's every country. So how do we uh, enhance certain very specific things by using interventions of inclusion that allow women, people of color, and uh, immigrants in your organizations to at least reach all levels of the organization and then we can return to because if you, you don't treat the workforce well then what you're doing is you may not be able to attract the right uh, high level skills into organization. Driver, do you want to react right away? Uh, yeah actually I have certain uh, uh, problems with this answer because uh, it's dual. First my own experience in different kind of organizations have, uh, have been exactly opposite one. Basically mm -hmm. I can't spot any, any kind of uh, of glass ceilings as such at all. Not in attitude, not in policies, not in any other aspects, especially in international companies I have worked with or for. Secondly, I would say, argue that um, uh, actually uh, in some sectors of economy, I don't know why, but it's related somehow to the overall uh, I would say perception of those in society and because of educational problems related. Let's put it bluntly, I have worked for railways for a long time. Railways are very mannish. Why? Because railway education is not popular among ladies. That's it. 
I'm not saying this uh, simply. It's, 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 it's not an easy easy issue to, to to discuss why, but but at least it's an a obvious issue. It starts from education. We have two thirds of the higher education, depth cell education people actually ladies. It's it's female uh, high end education nowadays in Estonia, and still you are talking about about uh, glass ceilings. It won't last forever, definitely not. And, uh, and on top of that, in certain areas, if there is a need for uh, female participation, then it should be uh, looked very closely, not on the present situation, but what has been the entire chain of the career mm. before that, mm. uh, starting with education. Particularly in this railway case, it's about education, because in railway education, you barely can find any ladies at all, whatever reasons. It used to be so. Not anymore exactly, but it used to be so. So to, to, to get all this chain um, uh, simultaneously and trying to, to see what are the real reasons and then prove the case and start to change. Otherwise, we end up with quotas, which is a nice thing to have. The implicit uh, answer to complicated problems, which proves to be wrong sooner or later like any other simplicity to answer to uh, complicated problems. So okay, quotas we have another conference coming on quotas. We have so <laughs> many yeah. topics that are so important <laughs> and so yeah. broad. It won't work. Yeah, mm, that's I'm my point. Quotas won't work. The mindset works, but quotas no, because okay. quotas are, are too simplistic uh, solution. But I have a suggestion, actually, everybody who wants to discuss the topic with uh, Raiva. Raiva, are you joining the reception later? Are you approachable <laughs> tonight? Yeah, of course. Can we <laughs> continue the discussion later? So we, I think it's, it's an important topic. But um, Vilina, do you have anything to add to the Christina's uh, well, question? Well, I kind of, I'm a bit pessimistic in the sense that I, I think that uh, we have to look for the second generation. That um, the first generation of migrants, unfortunately, I can't, well, in Finland, we are, we've been a very homogeneous country for a long time. I'd wish it would be different and things would be different, but uh, I believe we have to have to wait for the second generation to to take their place. But uh, thank you, thank you very much for all your uh, presentations.